I'm Chiquita Banana, and I've come to say Bananas have to ripen in a certain way And when they're flecked with brown and have a golden hue Bananas taste the best and are the best for you Although many of us consider bananas to be a commodity food item available cheaply in every grocery store, the truth is that this fruit is responsible for many of the environmental problems in Central America. Ranging from deforestation to pesticide contamination to solid waste pollution. This undue imposition of environmental burdens on small farmers and communities that are not given healthy working spaces job security, fair wages, or medical compensation is unjust. Early Spanish explorers claimed Central America for Spain, desiring its natural resources and its potential for converting indigenous people into Catholics. The lives of many indigenous people were lost while fighting against the Spanish in an effort to keep their native lands, culture, and way of life intact. Central America's history of conquest and colonization has had long-term implications for the region. This era began with Spanish settlements that disrupted indigenous communities through silver mining and ore extraction, the spread of diseases like smallpox, and the conversion of communities from their native religions to Christianity. This legacy of invasion, subjugation, and extraction under foreign control has continued today. Central America, sometimes considered the backyard of the United States, has long been used, exploited, and dumped on by the American government and multinational corporations. These regions underwent development in the agricultural sector when the United States realized they could outsource both production and labor for very little cost. This history is exemplified by the United Fruit Company, an American corporation that grew tropical fruit, primarily bananas, in Central and South America, and exported it to the United States and Europe. A thousand miles south of New Orleans, the blue waters of the Caribbean break upon the shores of Central America. For many years, these fascinating tropical countries have been served by United Fruit Company's Great White Fleet. These lands are principally agricultural, and their combined population is actually less than the population of New York City. Bounded by Mexico on the north and Colombia on the south, Central America includes Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, El Salvador, Costa Rica, and Panama. Add to this area the important island republics of Cuba, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, and the British island of Jamaica, and you have encompassed the area known The United Fruit Company had enormous impacts on the political and economic development of Central America, while enhancing corporate profits at the expense of small farmers' security. Global environmental justice has developed as a rhetoric within the past few decades to combat the unjust impositions of environmental burdens on marginalized communities and nations. Due to an increasing globalized and neoliberal economy, countries in the global north have experienced increased profits at the expense of the global south. This can be seen through processes such as the treadmill of production and consumption, in which affluent consumers in the north partake in a capitalist consumer society that demands new disposable goods while developing countries and marginalized communities shoulder the waste and pollution that is produced. Within the global banana production complex, there are several theories, structures, and processes of global environmental justice. The first example is that of job blackmail, in which consumer demands cause decreased wages as a product becomes cheaper. Because of this, workers must engage in increased risk for lower wages and more hours of work. Workers face constraints that force them to accept their risks of pesticide exposure. These constraints include limited job options, a weakened union presence, and systematic failures at the judicial level. Environmental colonialism can be seen through the repeated foreign subjugation of indigenous peoples in an effort to extract natural resources. This reproduces the colonial era dynamic of foreign profit as a result of oppressing native people. In 
It is interesting that while we think of the banana as a hearty food, this is only because so much care is taken to see that it arrives on our tables in good condition. For the banana must be cut green and ripened artificially. It is one of the few fruits that loses its flavor if allowed to ripen on the plant. Lana Narrows, banana plantation workers, face a number of health threats by working in monocultural banana fields. Chemicals are applied to the banana plant at every stage of growth. First herbicides, nematicides, and then fungicides. These chemicals are often encased in the plastic bags workers must put on stocks and then remove and dispose of. Pesticides and fungicides are also often sprayed aerially. All of these chemicals can be washed off of plantations because of high rainfall averages and are then taken into groundwater systems that can affect entire communities. These bananeros, often untrained and marginalized workers, lack sufficient precautionary instructions or protective equipment. The chemicals used in banana production are not approved under the US EPA guidelines and can have a negative effect on the respiratory, endocrine, and reproductive systems. Women in banana packing plants have complained about skin lesions and headaches, while field hands deal with nausea and may become sterile. These inhumane conditions are faced by a largely indigenous working group. There have been some recent developments in the banana industry that shed hope on the situation. With the emergence of third-party certifications, there has been a push for company accountability in terms of ecological and worker health. These certifications include sustainable agricultural practices, organically produced fruits, and fair trade labels. However, these programs face obstacles as well. Growing and selling organic bananas could be a solution to illness and ecosystem degradation caused by pesticides, but it's unlikely that growing practices will be changed within large corporations that treat workers unfairly unless immense international pressure is applied. Because many of the injustices faced by indigenous and marginalized communities connected with banana plantations occur in Central America, far away from where the fruit is consumed, we as consumers have a hard time understanding and empathizing with the inhumane conditions in which the banana production complex operates. The spatial difference is exacerbated by the general lack of awareness, which can be caused by a lack of media attention to this injustice. Because bananas are a commodity item and have such innocent and wholesome qualities, it can be difficult to tell consumers that they may be partaking in global environmental injustice by purchasing bananas. <laughs>